All right, friends, welcome to the June 2020 Patreon meeting. First thing to note for people that are here and anyone that joins, although obviously they aren't listening to me say this right now because they haven't joined yet. I am recording this as normal, but rather than it only be for Patreon and Twitch subs, it's just going to be for the whole channel. They're going to get a little taste of that a little extraness here because there is a lot of tabletop RPG and Twitch streaming news that needs to be covered. Some people don't care about it. Uh, content warning, according to this, it's gonna cover sexual assault. And it, that's like the first thing we're gonna cover. So if that makes you uncomfortable, now is the time to bug out. So, I don't know, like a week, a week and a half ago, basically the entire internet fell apart when uh, in the game developer circles, people started like a second wave of Me Too uh, sexual assault accusations. Most of them with some pretty reliable evidence. Uh, that spilled over into the comic book artists community and into the Twitch streamer community from the game dev community. And... Uh, the ones from Twitch are are horrible. I've read terrible things about people that I've uh, streamed with. I've read terrible things about uh, people that I've supported, people that I've shouted out and said, hey, go watch these people's streams. They are horrifying predators. So you never know who you can trust anymore. Everything is shit is the first thing I have to say. Number two. The Twitch CEO and a lot of their staff, several of their staff have been accused uh, pretty credibly. Um, the CEO has reportedly, via new, like so many reports, not only ignored, but intentionally suppressed accusations against top partners. Twitch staff members have gone out of their way to use their authority and power to uh, promote young women so that they would then be able to go to TwitchCon and then they'd be able to meet these young women. Like, all of it is shit. Amazon has given no indication that they're going to remove this guy. Twitch is in the middle of an internal power struggle that's been going on since they were bought by Amazon. Back then, back before then, they were like the cool people. They had a pretty solid culture. When the CEO was replaced by this Amazon guy, uh, they brought in a new series of staff and it was no longer about Justin TV or, or Hitbox TV culture, or whatever you want to call it. It's no longer about that esports life. It became uh, corporate and Amazon-ish and it was there to be monetized and make money. And so far it appears that it's done its job fantastically. And um, the problem is, of course, is that they're horrifying and the old staff and the new staff are battling. Technically, I guess I'm an employee of Twitch and Amazon because I have an affiliate account and I get a W-2 from them or, or a 1099 or something like that. So I don't know that I'm not allowed to talk about this stuff, but let me just say that guy's not my CEO. Like, holy shit, fuck this dude. So it doesn't look like Twitch or anyone above them is going to do anything about the CEO, but you know how these things work in business, like overnight tomorrow we could hear he's being removed and replaced. Uh, so what I have to say is I think that Twitch is about to see a bunch of very huge shakeups. Uh, already they've started outrightly banning several super huge streamers, like top 100 streamers. There's this thing, I'm sure in the future we're going to be like, oh, that's what all that Dr. Disrespect stuff was about. But right now, we're all sitting around going, why was Dr. Disrespect banned? But no one can tell us why. In the future, we'll all have a good laugh about it. We could learn in five minutes, or we may never learn at this point. Um, I think that there's a pretty good chance that there are going to be very serious rules changes. There's also a lot of uh, topic about music because now uh, Just Dance streams are getting DMCA claimed live, which is a very serious problem. So the way that Twitch and Amazon handle streaming, the way they handle business, the way that they handle monetization, I think is all gonna change. Don Larry, I'm gonna mute you real quick because we're, we're echoing out of you. Um, 
I don't know where it's going to go. I have no indication of that. Number two of the number two is Wizards of the Coast has the same problem. Uh, there's a guy who works at Wizards of the Coast. His name is Mike Merles. He's been working there a very long time. About a year and a half ago, it turns out this guy was handling complaints against a Wizards of the Coast consultant by the name of Zach Sabbath, Zach S. And uh, he turned over the names of all of those people that were complaining about him to Zach S., which, as you might be aware, is a pretty serious problem. Like, ethically, there's a 0% chance that that was correct. And in ever since then, he still works for them, but he's been removed from every position of power, which doesn't really make it okay. But, I mean giving an abuser access to all of the people that say they have been abused by him uh is dumb does just super dumb so that's where we're at with wizards of the coast so wizards has a second problem so this is number two part two part two of two so let's call it part four uh they have a problem with evil races. They say evil races no longer exist. People say orcs shouldn't all be evil. Drow shouldn't all be evil. And wizards appears to be receptive to this. It sounds like they're going to do some rewrites. It should be noted, though, I don't think they're going to come out with 6th edition anytime soon. This is all shooting from the hip. I don't have any inside information to share with you. What I do know is that D&D Next was in planning for years before it became 5th edition. Uh, I mean, when it was D&D Next, advantage and disadvantage was a huge mechanic, and now I barely use it once an episode. So uh, even if we were to see a D&D 6th edition beta, it, it will be a long time before it delivers. Uh, and I don't think we are. I think they're pretty well set on, if not making money on 5th edition, then at least marketing it pretty well, because D&D Beyond has what appears to be a exclusive and long-term contract to put out PDF versions of all of their content. So what I believe we are going to see from Wizards of the Coast is that D&D is going to re-release the basic rules and they're going to start putting out much faster uh, releases of our Unearthed Arcana and rule decisions like that. Overall, they seem to be sticking to their guns that you should change any content that you are not comfortable with and that it's up to the players. But in the end, I think that they're going to be making broad revisions. They're not going to like re-release the rule book, but they are going to say, hey, let's make sure that we're doing this. All right, so now I've covered all of the companies and what they're doing. I I feel like I should come out and say some stuff myself. Just be really clear. I'm not, I haven't sexually assaulted anyone in my entire life. So you're not about to hear me incriminate myself in that regard. However, I have had trouble communicating with uh, pa cast members in the past. Uh, at one point, there was someone on my show who a third party said that they had raped somebody and I was like, what the fuck? The person that they had raped was also a cast member and I thought, well, like, holy crap. Like, I, I, don't ha I don't have a legal department, but this sounds really bad. And this person is currently on my shows, so I suppose I should investigate. So I went to the accuse, accuse the victim, and I just said, Hey, I heard that this happened, like, as, as politely as I could, but very straightforward. And it turned into a massive argument. The answer was no, but thanks for bringing it up. And then they said all kinds of things about other cast members. And the reason I'm saying this is because I am not sure how to approach these situations. I'm seeing some of the accusations about sexual assault and just weird things that people say to each other. And I think, wow, it seems like a trap that I could have fallen, not about sexual assault, but just weird things streamers say to each other. It seems like a trap I could fall into. Um, 
about two two episodes of on the tables topic ago uh one of the players went rogue and just started running around while everyone else was asleep and wouldn't wake them up and the rest of the players kind of said something like well we'd like to be involved but we're all asleep and there was a lot of kind of silent passive aggression but no one outrightly said anything so even though there was not a great vibe at the table no one said anything so i let it keep going because i was interested to see what happened on this solo quest and then the the solo quest almost ended up killing the whole party twice so everyone was really upset afterwards including the person who went on that solo quest i bear some of the blame for that but it's hard to say how much and why uh there are conversations i need to have with all of my casts about um tools like veils consent lines uh i'm trying to have them piece by piece with each of the casts in their own way some cast members don't care to have those conversations and it's tough approaching them about that so just know that a uh you may you probably will never see or hear about it but there is a wave of uh things going into this about what we will be talking about and i think the only shows that i haven't fully had that conversation with are battletech and rogue trader sorry battletech atom of total warfare everybody else has had the conversation so far battletech a time of total warfare and rogue trader of course have recently undergone some cast changes which is why they haven't had this conversation yet because everything has been shit um i need a plan for how i approach intercast discussions especially about cast members being involved with each other in the future i i don't have one i don't even know how i would approach this so now to part six let's call it which is the way that i approach other streamers now of course it's been a while since i've had to do this because until this month my shows have been relatively stable and my casts have been the same people over and over again but back in the day twitch put out guidelines now of course now we know that some of those guidelines were written by literal rapists uh and stalkers but the guidelines said if you want to make friends on twitch you should hang out in other streamers chats you should chat with them you shouldn't mention that you should do some collaborations until you get to know them for a little while and then approach them so i just kind of did that back in the day and you know that's how i met guys guys like henley and uh people like lexi tales uh both of them i met just by like watching their stream and saying hey you want to stream together that's that's how it worked uh nowadays i don't know people are saying that kind of stuff is creepy stalker material I, I don't know that's literally the only way that i meet new people that haven't been recommending me by word of mouth i mean you look at the way my cast currently are everyone is either somebody that i've streamed with before or is someone that was recommended by someone i stream with i haven't sought out any of my current cast members uh in any way i mean james was a guest after giving us some real knowledge on what almost like a year and a half two years ago i don't i don't remember it's been a while so i'm looking for ways to meet new streamers not there's nothing wrong with my current cast members it's just i'm trying to expand out there clearly i cannot take the, t the twitch guidelines to heart because they are written by idiots so all right now i've already talked about atomic and sid alpha leaving in two separate videos if this is your first time here about it go to my youtube channel and google june 2020 ap gaming reel they're two separate whole things i'm i'm not going to talk about it here or again i'm just going to acknowledge that it happened now we can talk about channel news now that we're past all the horrifying bits summer survey 7 has started july 26th is the seventh year start of year seven maybe i don't know uh the summer survey is it'll be in the youtube description section it is on uh that channel that i have on my stream my discord called what is it called announcements it's on announcements you'll be able to find it there um 
next meeting i'll have more information obviously it has not even all of the shows have had an audience to fill it out with yet but based on let's call it first impressions it seems like Radosaurus has immediately leaped out by an enormous amount like 75 percent as being the number one cast member everybody loves him uh in terms of shows that people watch, it's Battletech. Battletech wins everything. And in terms of things people are looking forward to, uh, Cyberpunk 2077, if the TTRPG ever gets released, uh, Cattletech, which is a, used to be a joke about Battletech, but now it's real. Uh, and it'll just be a short show about Battletech farmers in the Battletech universe. And an unnamed Star Wars FFG game. Now, people have sent me some suggestions. Uh, Star Wars by West End was one of the suggestions. So, uh, just assume that the, the, that could exist in the future. These are the kind of shows that we'll be looking forward to. Number two, um, I've had a lot of trouble recently with the Real Talk channel on my Discord. Uh, it's supposed to be a place where people can go and let off steam. It's important. I mean, the whole purpose of things like the World Trade Organization and the United Nations, the biggest thing that they do is allow large businesses and corporations and nations to talk to each other and resolve their differences without immediately throwing missiles at each other. Uh, I know that says, sounds weird to say about these, even for a trade organization, but talking before going to war in any format is what those organizations are there to do. And so Real Talk is there to let people see a new side, gain some new information, let off some steam. It, it does not do that. It currently does not do any of those things. It's just a place for people to go to be angry right now. I don't know how to reform it. I think that the only thing I can do at this point is to just nuke it. It's I'm just going to remove it. I'm going to give people like a week or two to come up with suggestions if they want to keep it around in a way that won't make everybody really unhappy. But all I hear from people now is that they don't like it, they hate it, they mute it. The people that go there are never happy. It has, I don't want to suppress political talk and religious talk and talk about people's lives, but I mean, it's just become a mess that it sucks all joy from the world. So, Hard Space Shipbreaker. I don't know that there's going to be many more of these streams coming out until more content is released. There's only so many industrial geckos I can pull apart, but it has been a real bolster for the channel this month. Uh, even with a lot of uh, shows being canceled, with cast being replaced, um, I'll touch back on that in a second, but even with all of those things happening, Without Hard Space Shipbreaker, it still would have been an average viewership month. With it, it's one of my best months ever. So I like it. It's very enjoyable. People seem to enjoy it as well. That's, that's where I'm at with that. Now, in regards to... Uh, I just lost it. I don't remember where I was going next. I'll just keep moving. Board Game Cult is canceled. There are still some episodes of it waiting to drop, but we aren't going to be filming it on Monday night. I need a night off more than just every other Friday. So it's gone forever now. Uh, on the Tabletop was almost canceled this month permanently, but now it's going to come back, but it's not going to be West March's style anymore. It's just going to be uh, three players wandering around doing art and having cool times and investigating an island. Scooby-Doo instead of murder central a time of total warfare is temporarily back i anticipate that it could be back for maybe six to seven more episodes but rad might have to leave in two to three weeks for up to 60 days so it could be anywhere between a month and a half to like five to six months before the end of a time of total warfare season four at which place the cast will get together and talk about season five 
whether or not we want to do FedCon Civil War, whether we want to continue the show. Oh, the Vendor Steel continues unchanged. It's powerhouse. Um, I think maybe I might want to do another show in the future. That's only two hours straight to YouTube. Very condensed. Uh, 2020 plus plus a new cyberpunk second edition show is coming out the zeroth episode of it like character creation and campaign creation is already one of the most popular videos on the channel in all time and certainly at the top near the top of the list for this month although this month has been one of the most popular of all time because it's been so much drama going on you know how much i love making drama videos and doing editing fills me with immense joy all right i think i covered a whole bunch of stuff does anyone have any questions about the 15 topics i covered i had a, I had a couple of quick notes mm -hmm. just on, on three things um one of them was uh you're talking before about your concern with trying to find other affiliates to to connect with you know you're not using the old method you did yeah uh, i mean for example the way that i originally reached out to you for the show was you actually said on one of your streams we're looking for other, you know, other streamers podcasts or whatever to, to come and join the show as guests it's probably worthwhile doing that more on the streams because you, you will find there are people out there that don't connect with you currently that still watch the streams okay and so every well, i should that. probably do that on the next episode of rogue trader although uh, technically I did it on the episode before last of Rogue Trader, we, and we, there we were no there were yeah. no bites on that hook. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but not not just one show, but other shows as well. Sure, I understand. Um, second comment was um, just with regards to you mentioned how some people are interested in the WEG system of uh, Star Wars. Yep. Um, I, I'd I'd probably just throw out the caution that uh, there's been a lot of streams I've seen recently where people have gone for nostalgic playthroughs of old systems, like you know D and D Second Edition. Um, once again, West End Games, like the, the old Ghostbusters and Star Wars system. Um, they're really great for nostalgic people who want to see the, the system they grew up on. Um, but a lot of these systems, having been made in the late 80s, you know, haven't aged necessarily well. And you won't probably get a new player base coming along to watch a show based upon a nostalgic system. You just, you'll, you'll, you'll get people that will want to watch the old system. But it's not because the old system is good. It's because it's nostalgic. Yes, but... My current two titans are Battletech, and it sounds like Cyberpunk 2020 also <laughs> going to be big, and they're all, both ancient as fuck. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, and the last thing I was going to say was with your with your hard space streams, because you're getting some some good views from that. That are probably not just people that are watching your channel only, but are just googling for hard space playthroughs. Is it worthwhile at the start of each stream just calling out, you know, what your other content is? Maybe. Uh, uh, I feel like that's exhaustive, but I certainly could attempt to do it for my intro. It's not like I use my intro to do anything useful normally. No, that was all I had anyway. Okay. Well, thank you for those. Uh, it should be noted also that, James, you did a, let's call it a consumer analysis of my YouTube channel using publicly available data in which you came up with the term consumer stickiness, which was... I, it's so funny. Uh, we turned it into a whole joke on uh, Rogue Trader. But yeah, like you came up with some very interesting points as to uh, titling episodes and including the name of the system in the title of the show and uh, which cast members have the most loyal following. So I want to thank you for that publicly. It's It was fantastic to have that knowledge, which is why the word premiere will now appear in the first episode of cyberpunk 2020 plus plus it's like the new knife ball oh knife ball knife ball is the new knife ball i was just thinking about virgil the other day never forget uh yeah i mean it was it was a pretty dumb move yeah so i uh had something about real talk uh since uh you know, I'm inside there as well, but uh, have it muted most of the time. Uh, and I think most people do this for the simple reason of we can only be outraged so much in our lives that uh, we need to take a break away from it. And uh, um, when we are ready, we go back in and talk about stuff that bothers us or that we want to talk about. 
uh, my question here is, I think it's important for a community to be able to talk about things that really bother us uh, and have other people that we can talk about it uh, but in a civilized manner. But what's more important is the sanity uh, of the guy that, uh, um, what's the word, organizes all of this. I mean, it's your Discord, it's your community, and your sanity goes, uh, goes above the needs of the people. Is, uh, is my argument here. So it's, um, do, we, do you want uh, AP Gaming realists on Discord to talk about politics or take that, take that uh, energy about what's happening in real life on other, like Reddits or servers and uh, be chill about role-playing games on your server? That's a great question, John Alar. The problem is, is that I'd like people to be able to have open communication, but right now open communication is just screaming at each other at top, top of their lungs, going, ask Trump supporters. Uh, or here's the terrible thing cops are doing, part 500. So that it's not working for me. It's absolutely awful. It's one of those things where you don't shit where you sleep. And I guess that this Discord server is something that we all go to to hang out, but it's also Arthur's life and part of his livelihood. Yes. Yeah, it's like the old rule, old rule about at your work, you never talk about sex, politics, or religion because um, somebody, somebody there that uh, is on the other side to you and you get up in an argument. So uh, I can sort of see the thing about, you know, I mean, certainly I, I commend you, Arthur, for sort of staying out of that stuff yourself as well more recently, like leave, leaving leaving real talk up but not being involved in it. But still, once again, it's... Yeah, I only did that for about two weeks while I was thinking about all these things. Then I showed back up and it was still awful, so... Yeah, but two people that are on your channel could easily go to a different server and have an argument and, be, and have hurt feelings and affect their relationship within your channel as well, so it's... Uh, You're I mean, saying I should form a whole separate Discord just for screaming no, no, no. at each other? No, what, what, what I'm saying is that, like, you, you could stop people from doing it on your channel and they may still come to blows in other in other, in other places, like on Reddit or whatever the case sure. may be. If they, yeah, they, of course. Yeah. Our, our battle already. shall light the sky with fire. I, I understand how this works. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, as far as I'm concerned, I handled everything with Atomic terribly. Uh, well, here I am talking about it again. But, like, the night where we had our argument, I was not acting professionally in any way. Uh, but, on the other hand, I had set very strict guidelines for him after he treated me like an absolute piece of shit, and he immediately broke them that night, and I was furious. Uh insensate with rage i think might be i might be using insensate wrong but i don't want to google it because i'm too busy <laughs> radosaurus is asking me questions in the middle, <laughs> middle of this about dante fierro's logos so um like i i just don't want to be arguing with people in real talk like that i feel like it brings out the worst in me and i definitely feel like it brings out the worst in other people it's basically turned into like people who are conservative who feel bad about Trump but want to apologize or people who are infuriated by everything going around that's shitty all the time and want to say, hey, look at this shitty thing that I found that's really shitty. So it accomplishes none of its goals and actively harms participants. So It's also uh, very hard to talk about... Uh... I mean, it's real talk. Like sometimes I'd like to go in there, talk about my own problems or like something good that happens in my life, but it doesn't get any attention because it's not the new big thing to be angry about. So it's like either gets ignored or gets a small congratulations, but no talk about it. Sure. I, I agree that I have seen that happen several times. So that's, that is my answer long form to your questions on the liar. Unless there are compelling reason exists for people to say that Real Talk should stick around, I am probably going to remove it and the topics that it covers from uh, being discussed. Uh, that's, the way I see it, the only way for Real Talk to keep existing is get more moderators, have stricter rules of how to engage in conversation 
I so mean, I, I don't even know what those rules would even begin to look like. Don't name call each other. It's like that it's already like is a rule. <laughs> yes. But, so, uh, as I've been a moderator for years, there was never really uh, uh, a, there was never really any authority within. It's like, okay, I will mute this guy for like two days because he's acting out of line. All I had access to was, you know, kick. Uh, because uh, I was mainly used for kicking bots from China to post in European hours. I mean, I don't feel like I've needed moderation help overall. It just, I show up sometimes to kick something. I mean, the number of people I've had to kick is less than 10. Uh, I can probably tell you all of their names and all of them were absolutely shitty to me. And the final thing to note is that uh, I don't want to have to make drama videos about the next Atomic, but if I don't tell everybody everything that they've done, then I spend a week, well, a weekend having to listen to people go, oh, don't worry, he's cool, he's my friend, I really like seeing him. Can't you work it out between the two of you without anyone understanding that he might be your friend, but he's my enemy? And he's treated me as such. So, pronouncements about why people have been kicked have been necessary ever since Team Sociospats decided to lie about why I removed them. I, I fucking hate having to discuss rules violations. I mean, I don't like talking about cast member changes. It's my policy overall not to, if necessary. All right. Any other questions, concerns? You're raising your hand, Bogan Williard. Please, you, yes, please. Whatever you're going. To, I didn't even know you could raise your hand in Zoom. I don't even know how you did it. So. Why is there a hand in Zonawar's upper corner? How did you do that? What we'll dark magic is that? It's a reactions button, and there's a thumbs okay. up. And, I don't know uh, how this works. Yeah. Your mic is not no. currently working. I would check in the lower right-hand corner for that your correct mic is selected on. Yeah, welcome, welcome. While you're typing, allow me to say this real quick. My studio is going to be worked on. By studio, I mean basement uh, over the next couple of days, so. Uh, of course, friends, as soon as this is over, I'm going to upload this video onto YouTube. And when that's done, I'm unplugging my computer and moving all of my stuff away. If you've been watching my streams this week, you know what I'm talking about. Tuesday and Wednesday, though, I suspect that my bathroom will still be worked on, which means that breaks on Tuesday and Wednesday shows will probably be longer. Because that means I have to go upstairs. And going on to the first floor of my house at night means dealing with my cat. Why are you laughing, Klimo? Why does that fill you with such great joy and amusement, knowing that Amore will jump me the second I leave the basement? I just, I understand. She's gonna want food and water. She's gonna want attention. She'll follow me to the bathroom. She'll try to open the bathroom door. She's weird. Weirdo. Uh, yes, well, thank you for respecting that reason. <laughs> I'm glad that the reason for the video has come through. Uh, I don't like making either of those videos. I don't particularly like half of the stuff I had to talk about today, but, you know, people couldn't stop sexually assaulting people consistently huge streamers acting like children or teenagers or dumbasses it's been an incredible month as part of an incredible year I think you should call it your broadcast center rather than your basement well I call it my studio right that's what I normally refer to it as I mean my studio refers to maybe four or five feet beyond my arm reach all this uh, so much stuff it took me like 40 hours to prepare for this 
basement painting, but that's what happens when your refrigerator overflows. Is the damp issue solved at least? I think so. We'll find out more tomorrow. I mean, the guy's going to show up and say, this works or this didn't work, and you're screwed or you're not screwed. I'm hoping the answer is not screwed. So I have a question about your new upcoming Cyberpunk game. Yes. Uh, what is your, like, how long do you imagine it's to run? Mm. Uh, especially since your form has, like, eight other campaigns on it that you would like to run in the future. Yeah, I mean, oh, if you'll remember earlier, I had a topic I wanted to talk about, and I completely forgot about it. Uh, and said I'm just going to keep going. That ties into this discussion because I've just remembered what it was. So uh, even with two cast members leaving, I would say if if you watch my show long enough or if you follow any tabletop RPG shows, you know it can take months to get a new show ready to go. Um, and the, this got back on its feet in like two to three weeks. Mostly because I used ideas or people that I had already had. As soon as things started going bad, I immediately moved to have replacements ready to go. I am, you might pretend that I'm actually good at improv things, but I'm really not that good at improvisational mechanics. Uh, I am prepared because I am prepared. So several ideas that I'd had on the waiting list ready to go were what got thrown up. I'm not flexible i was just ready for something like this to happen already because it's been like a month and a half since or a year and a half since anything this major has happened but uh i will continue to have um a congo line of things ready to go at any moment given immense disaster because it's happened so many times in the past you just must be ready for all of your shows to get canceled or for you to get damned or a cast member literally dies. So, uh, while I might have a number of shows ready to go in the future, their readiness level is, uh, perhaps not to have the show ready to go now, but it is to replace just in case anything bad happens, I should say. All right, that might have been slightly confusing, but I hope it answered your question. So you plan it to run like for another one and a half years until it collapses? Oh, sorry, for you're... Cyberpunk, yes. I My initial estimate for Cyberpunk is let's give it 10 weeks and we'll see how it goes from there. Uh, with all of my shows, I normally set it for 20 episodes, which usually <laughs> tends to... Uh, sorry, we're getting some echo from you. At the very least, we know that your mic was muted. It was working now. Um, 20 weeks tends to end up being something like f five months on paper and more like eight months in reality, uh, given holidays and breaks and past disappearances and things like that. Um, eight months is a pretty reasonable amount of time for people to sit down and do something together. Uh, this is already a pretty hard business to work in to show up regularly at a certain time and perform for an audience while also throwing out improvisation constantly. Uh, this is what we do is not particularly easy. So, uh, eight months is a well schedulable time. Six months, I think, is probably what cyberpunk 2020 is going to turn out to be because new game plus met fairly consistently until recently when it exploded so i would say let's give cyberpunk 2020 six months and we'll see where we go from there and then we'll how should i put this re-up everyone's contract at that time i don't want to commit to a storyline or too many episodes without knowing that everyone will hate what's happening in four episodes and then i have to shut it all down without ever getting to the end i also don't want to end up in another okeanos dinosaur island situation dinosaur island i miss you yeah it's never gonna happen okeanos is gone it accepted fuck
Okay, Bogan, did you have any questions? I mean, not not majorly. I was happy to finally get to participate in one of these. Uh, I'm assuming I'm a little late. Uh, I work overnight, so I don't I don't get as much live time as I would like. But um, I do enjoy your shows, and I've I've always just been grateful you've been so out there for your fans. And thank you. That stuff. Because um, even before I joined your Patreon, you were always really open to questions and stuff. So yeah. Uh, well, if you don't have any questions now, and if no one else has any questions, comments, concerns, it only a small question also about cyberpunk. Mm -hmm. uh, since I'm looking to, you know, do some fan art because I like cyberpunk. Yeah, I, uh, I saw you do the hardcore Henry art. <laughs> hardcore Henry, yes. Uh, like the reference sheet of uh, what's what to imagine under Cyberpunk 2020, since I don't really know that world. I know Shadowrun and some movies, but not Cyberpunk 2020. Would you say it's like also is like in the style of uh, like Ghost in the Shell? Well, I'll tell you what, like I will, how about I send you what I sent the official character artist for all the characters description, and then I will send you my aesthetic image pack that I made for this show. Uh, yeah, especially since the city is like a big part of the show. I yep. want to have to be able to reference parts well, the city of is the based city. off of Midgar from Final Fantasy 7 but with suburbs. Okay, I don't know. I don't know. I never played that game. All right, I don't know how to go from there. It's it's will, it's the dark future of the 1980s. Yes, it's Just, the dark future of the 1980s is okay. good. Uh I don't, I don't know how to describe Midgar other than Midgarish. Yeah, I'll, I'll watch a Final Fantasy Let's Play. You will make more, right? Uh, go watch Caitlyn's. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah. Problem I, solved. Listen, I'm two thirds of the way through the game. I'm not going to restart <laughs> to do a Let's <laughs> Play. That's not happening. Um. All right. Any other questions? Will uh, you read the short stories I write? I read some of them others that have suspiciously adult yaoi content i do not others i might skim browse peruse palavir uh in their vicinity it's just simple after just control f the word moist if it appears then don't <laughs> read it <laughs> oh Thanks, James. What incredible advice. I should do that with all documents in the future. No one would ever find that weird or suspicious. All right, then this meeting is adjourned, and all I have to say is uh, watch for big changes at Twitch, because I think they've got a rules problem, and the rules... the moderation problem and a executive problem and it's about to get solved in a big way i think could happen all right 